Is a rear wing better than a spoiler? The answer is no, not for a hatchback. However, there is an optimal solution. A popular choice for improving the performance of hatchbacks for motorsports is to add a rear wing. With very fast hatchbacks using a wing, it would make sense that this device works. The people who build and race these cars and are successful aren't just lucky. This video will go through how much benefit using a rear wing has and why it does or doesn't work. The hypothesis for this exercise was whether the improved production car regulations of Australia favour a rear wing or a spoiler. The rules for these cars in Australia are similar to the SCCA in the US and hot hatches in the UK. This is where a small single element wing can be mounted above the rear window, not above the roof line, and its width limited to the hatch. In this case, there is a 200mm box that extends from the body it can fit in, which also includes the size of its end plates. The SCCA Super Touring has a little bit more freedom than this. Notably, the wing is allowed to be above the roof's highest point by 4 inches, and it can be mounted further back. Just in case someone notices, I'm running these simulations with the wing just above the roof height, because, unlike this model, the middle of the roof should be higher than the outer parts. So the wing is relative to the end height of the roof, and in principle with the Australian regulations. I'll also say that these results are relative, and therefore aren't hard and fast. More like a working assumption that can be built on with real world testing. For this video I ran 12 different wings of all sorts of configurations. 9 are illustrative and I'll be using these here. It became clear that running a wing on a hatchback is not straightforward. The problem that became apparent was how the air falls off the rear window and roof, making aerodynamic interactions with the wing very limited. The first test ever I ran on this model was without a device above the rear window. This resulted in a large amount of drag from this air at the rear. It is this air I'm putting the wing behind to try and extract downforce. The spoiler on the other hand creates downforce from the floor and precedes the air falling off the rear window. So that means that the problem is twofold. The wing has a small surface area, and the laminar air that it needs is limited. This is opposed to the large surface area of the floor, that doesn't need super low air pressure to create a decent amount of downforce. This air doesn't necessarily need to be laminar either. The wings are presented as follows. Two wings were created to replicate those commonly seen on the track cars, with very low angles attack. Then I increased the angle of attack to see if I could push the outer sections harder. Three twisted spans were then run at different angles of attack. Finally, a concluding configuration that provided really nice results. The first two profiles used were a NACA 2412 and a S1223, both with gurney flaps. These gave 97.3 newtons and 105 newtons of downforce respectively. This compares to the car with a spoiler having 198 newtons. This graph I will use and continue to come back to to show the results. Note I plotted the downforce for the body in red, so subtracting the red from the total in the yellow gives the sole contribution of the wing. So it can be seen the wing is definitely working with the S1223 giving negative 172 newtons. By looking at this image, the outer sections are working the most, probably contributing most of the downforce at this point, which is really just making up for the body's rear lift. If this is the only simulation I was to run, I would suggest a spoiler is a much better option for a hatchback run in the improved production car racing in Australia. But maybe we're missing a trick, such that is there a configuration a wing can be used in this form of motorsports with hatchbacks? This is where I spent a week and a bit running cases to find a better wing. Eventually I did find a setup that was better. My strategy for improvement was to use the high profile S1223 and divide out the outer span section which is exposed to more air than the section behind the roof. The first simulation of this wing suggested that this strategy is correct as this section had flow attached. Adding more angle of attack didn't make things better. Clearly there was too much angle of attack, even for the segments at the side. But then I moved the wing back 150mm, without the extra planes and beyond the regulation box, this in turn more than doubled the downforce. Still, the flow separated more than I would like, so then I resorted back to the original angle of attack. 
This was better, producing the most downforce out of all the wings with 193 newtons, but not as good as I would expect. My thinking is that the high lift profile is a problem, but the angle of attack is zero. So all I can say is that keeping flow attached to the wings profile is really difficult here. Continuing to flog a dead horse, I used the same profile another three times, but two with a twisted span. The first around slightly increased angle of attack of the base S1223 to generate a bit more context. The second test reduced the angle of attack in the middle, but with a bit more at the ends. This gave the best overall results for the wings, with 141 newtons. The third with the lowest angle of attack was actually better than the first. Overall, the second produced 175 newtons of downforce, not any more than the baselines. The difference is, it somehow reduced the body's rear lift. Though overall the best result with 141 newtons of downforce for a refined wing isn't too bad, and has a good 60-40 front rear split, it is still not better than a sheet of aluminium bolted to the rear of the hatch. The difference is from the floor, and how little it works together with the wing. Now for the trick. I moved the same profile S1223 wing with its angle of attack used before by the third and fourth cases. It was moved so far forward as to remove the gap between the body and wing. The idea was to combine the characteristics of the spoiler and the wing. The spoiler made the floor work better, but the wing could also use the free stream air passing along the side, thus making the wing into a spoiler with an outer wing profile. The result added 50% of downforce created by the spoiler alone in the baseline. The front rear split is now almost 50-50, almost producing too much rear downforce for a front wheel drive car, which really just means more front downforce can be added. In conclusion, a hatchback would benefit more from a spoiler than a wing, that is, if the wing cannot be placed beyond the body in free stream air. But if a wing is the only option, it is worth adding. It just requires a lot more work and expense to get the most out of it. And here, I don't think I got everything out of it. However, if you combine both concepts, you're adding the aerodynamic characteristics together and opening the door to further increases in front downforce.